The next part of this video is I'm going to hook up the double fit. Since it's 240 volts, it's a double breaker. So 120, 120 is 240. I'm going to find it in my mess of a panel right now. I'm going to hook it up, get some power, make sure we have power at the outlet. And then we're going to hook up the new heat 240 volt with both mats. So let's get into that. Let's check the circuit with my trusty tester. Ooh, I have power. That's good. Let me shut the breaker back off and then we'll hook up the thermostat. The next step is I have the Wi-Fi set thermostat by a new heat. There's this little screw on the bottom. Just pull it off. And then you're going to see it says out, out, in sensor, in sensor. The first step is we're going to hook up the feed, which is the line. So it's going to say, if you pop this cover off, you have line, line, in, in, and then load out, out. You got that? So line is going to be in. So L1, L2, since this is 240, L1, L2 is your 240 line. So let me back out these screws and then we're going to hook up the line side first. Now I did go with 12 wire here because I was going to go with 120, but I changed my mind, but it still would be the same situation. It's just your circuit breaker would be different on 120, but this is 240. So you're going to crank that down, you know, slightly, but nothing crazy. You know, pull on the wire, make sure it's good. Same thing with your black. Remember both of these lines, they're both hot. Okay. The next step is you're going to take, I never cut this. I just stuff this into the box. That's just how I've always done it. This is the one, this is the mat going to the kitchen uh, side. So I'm going to take, I'm going to pull off the protective cover. I'm just going to twist the threaded line like this and go like this. And then I'm going to take both of these grounds. I'm going to put those together and then I'm going to get a wire nut and I'm going to hook that onto the ground because you got to keep your grounds together. So you don't need a big wire nut. You're going to take the ground from the panel and you're going to put this together like so. That's your first connection. Grounds to grounds. And I like to usually get a nice twist going on with the grounds and then give it a tug. So one ground, two ground, done. Stuff that into the box all the way in the back. I will show you where I stuff it because we don't need to see that anymore. Next up, we got your two legs that go to, this is, this is the feed side. So it's called the load. Make sure you get that to proper, you get that termination right, because if you switch it, you're gonna have problems. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go red to red and black to black, but I am not going to, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a, a test fit on these lines, I'm gonna bend them, just bend them in so like, I like to notch them like this, like one, two. See how that's going up? And then just push the box in. I'm gonna give you a closer look. You're gonna cut off a little bit of the lead, like so, one, because these are way too long, two, twist again. And again, I'm gonna do red to red first. So we're gonna go, so you can see it. Can you see that? So I'm going to do the red first. I have to cut these as well. I'm going to cut that. Doesn't be that long. I'm a little tight in this box. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to just try to get this in. It just reaches. I'm going to come down a little bit more. Yikes. So that's the one red. I'm going to take the other red that I have a little more slack on. I'm going to put it just like so. Now I'm going to, I'm going to tighten it up. So that's going to be one. No matter how many times I do this, I always have a little bit of anxiety turning it on. The next one's going to be black to black. This doesn't have to be any particular order, but you do want to keep your reds and your blacks on the same branch. That's two. Ooh, this one's going to be tight. Good thing I didn't cut that. I almost did. I'm going to tighten that up just as well. Take it nice and tight. Now you're going to give it a little tug, a little tug, a little tug, a little tug. Next, you have your two, your two probes. I'm going to cut these to the same length. I cut my probe side. Now I'm going to put this cover back on. Like so, so that cover is back on. 
make sure it indents in. And then I'm going to just stuff all of that, all the lines in carefully. You know, you don't want to hurt anything. Next, you got to run, ah, you know what, I'm going to run the backup probe. I'm just going to put it in here, like so, stuff this in here. So I have it for future reuse if I lose one of my temp probes. Get in there. And then now I have to run this temp probe through here, like this, so I could get to it. Because now I gotta put screws on. So this is set up, this looks really good, it's perfect. So let me get the screws from the box. I'm just gonna screw in, I don't have my screw gun, that's fine. I'm gonna screw in this, like so. One, two, so that's done. Make sure it's somewhat level, eyeball it. If you want to be an electrician and throw a little late level on it, that's fine. Next up, I'm gonna push this temp probe in back a smidge, and then I'm gonna cut it again, like so, and then I'm gonna pull these off, just separate them a little bit with your finger, and then I'm gonna cut it with my little, because this is like probably 18 wire. That's one, and that's two. Next up, you have both of your probes, sensor connections. So it'll just twist the copper, strip it, pull it back a little bit, and you need a little tiny Phillips head screwdriver. And this doesn't matter which way it goes. So I'm gonna tighten one up, like so. That's one, and then it might be a little finicky going in. And that's, so you gotta make sure it's actually going into this little slot. If it's fighting you, that means it's not going in. So that's to give it a little tug. Now I just like to keep my lines away from that little screw there. Now it's the most exciting and stressful part, putting the thermostat on and throwing power to it. I did all my checks, all my ohms are good. There's a little screw on the bottom, we gotta tighten that up. So let's do that now. Push against the wall and just tighten that up. You can feel it gets, it gets tight and then pull on it. I'm gonna take my plastic off because this is my own house. And let's see if we have power. All right, it says welcome. Perform system tests. Let's see what happens. Woo. Pass, pass, pass. Next. Press the top of the lid. This is, this is the GFI. Ground fault detected. There's a right side button right here. Press that button. GFI is functioning properly. So that is good. Next. Start using thermostat. I am the owner. And then you're gonna go through all the options in English. I'm gonna do all the times, but we have power. Next, Fahrenheit, tile stone, check. I want to program. And they're going to be all the same days for now. Week, done, sure. All days have been programmed. You can mess around with this if you want. I'm just going to go back. And then now we have the main system. Let's get to actually turning the heat on in the house. Well, there you have it. Another new heat video. This is my second new heat video. I'll link the other new heat video up, but that's just one mat in a bathroom. This is two mats on a 240 volt. It's, is it easy? It's easy if you take your time. I'll recap the new heat mat versus maybe a Dietrich heat mat if you're thinking about going about both. It's more expensive because you, you gotta get the Dietrich heat matting, which that substrate is very expensive. If you want to save some money, go with the door rock and put down the new heat mat. It does save you money, but it is limited because you can't get around only nooks and crannies. But for a big space like this, it makes sense to me. I'm also doing new, I'm doing new heat mats in my house and also doing teacher heat because every situation is different. The only negative that I don't love about the new heat mat is, is the bump on where the coil, the wire coil goes into the mat. It bumps up quite a bit and also that eighth inch of a drop on the tile once you come off the mat. I don't love that, but 
it takes a little bit longer to install the tile. Also, if you're doing a, maybe like a vinyl plank floor, you probably have to feather out that mortar a little bit more so the drop off isn't as big because you might have an issue with the, uh, the drop off with the, the, the clips. But I mean, that's a wrap on this video. If you have any questions about this video, please ask. If you like my how to install videos, please like this video. And if you like all my videos, please subscribe. Another video in the books. Thanks for all your support. And I will catch you next time. Take care.